Good day, my name is Carl Schneider. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Dutch National Center for Mathematics and Computer Science, CWI, in the Multiscale Dynamics Group in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to give a general talk in, the, in this workshop, Machine Learning for Space Sciences, as part of the COSPAR 2021. My talk is entitled The Machine Learning Time Series Dataset Prepared from the SOHO Mission, and the SOHO mission is a joint ESA-NASA mission, where SOHO stands for the Solar and Heliophysics Observatory. Now, during its 25 years and counting of service, it has recently, SOHO has recently celebrated its 25th anniversary, actually on this past December 2nd. Um, it has covered solar cycles 23 and 24, uh, providing an unprecedented 50 terabytes of data covering an outstanding, 20, an outstanding 20 million images, which together have captured around 30,000 coronal mass ejections. So this is a truly remarkable and incredible data set um, that would be awesome to use to gain insights, for instance, into uh, space weather use cases or other use cases. And for this, we first need to have a standardized data set. Uh, because the SOHO data that is available, for instance, on SDAC VSO, it is quite heterogeneous. So in order to have an input to a machine learning system to be able to extract insights from this data, we first need to standardize it in order to provide community standards and reproducibility. So this is the topic of my talk today, standardization and reproducibility. And uh, we enable this by providing the community with a publicly available software pipeline. Uh, before we get into details of the software pipeline, let us briefly go over the SOHO raw data products. And these consists of three different imaging instruments, the EIT, which is the Extreme Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope, um, the LASCO C2 and C3 instruments, where LASCO are the large angles spectrometric coronagraphs, uh, and the MDI, which is the Michelson Doppler imager, and it provides uh, magnetograms. So measuring the surface magnetic fields of the sun. Um, so the EIT instruments actually provide, the EIT instrument provides data at four different wavelengths, three of which are shown here, um, at 171 angstroms, 195 angstroms, 304 and 284 angstroms respectively. And uh, each of these uh, products uh, comes at a different cadence. For instance, the coronagraphs come at a cadence of around every 20 minutes, uh, whereas EIT195 comes at a slightly higher cadence of around five times an hour. And the EIT171 and 304 uh, come at around only once every six hours. And also the MDI instrument is around, has a cadence of around one and a half, uh, once per one and a half hours. Um, and just the image scale on the MDI instrument uh, reflects uh, the different polarity of fields. So there are both positive and negative uh, magnetic field strings, and these are usually measured in nano Tesla. And um, so these instruments are described in this table. Um, so indeed, they have they come at different cadences. So also the EIT two eight four also comes at a six hour cadence, and uh, these products are available from uh, different date ranges. For instance, the MDI instrument was already superseded in, after April 12, 2011 by the SDO mission. So the Solar Dynamics Observatory mission, which carries the HMI instrument, which is the Helio Seismic and Magnetic Imager. Um, so returning back to the SOHO raw data products, uh, these come at a resolution of 1K by 1K um, and they come at uh, different cadences, as we have already talked about, and they also cover uh, different regions of the solar disk. So either the full disk or in the case of the coronagraphs, uh, different extents of the corona. So for instance, C2 comes at one and a half to six solar radii and C3 comes at three and a half to 30 solar radii. So a bit of overlap there. Uh, and the, there used to be also a Laskell C1 instrument, which covered uh, 1.1 to three solar radii, uh, but it was, it, it was discontinued in, in mid-2000. Um, so upon examining these uh, SOHO raw data products, 
uh, we see that uh, a certain percentage of these uh, products has actually missing data. And this is due to telemetry errors, or also uh, due to recalibration maneuvers, uh, or also due to very strong solar storms, which actually uh, cause errors in, in downloading the, the data. Uh, and so these, uh, these have different morphologies. They come as holes or as missing tracks or as stripes, for instance, as we see here in, in panel A of the MDI instrument. Um, and um, for this reason also, uh, we need to have a data standardization pipeline that both cleans the available data products as well as provides uh, synchronized data products because that is crucial to have for a input to a machine learning system. And so what our uh, publicly available software pipeline provides the user with is the following. Uh, the user can select either all seven Soho uh, data products or a subset thereof. The user can choose start and end dates and also the time sampling rate. So a time step of two hours or 12 hours, depending on what challenge the user has in mind that they want to address. And also the target dimension. So we mentioned that the native resolution of Soho data products is 1K by 1K. Um, and these images are then quite large for input to a machine learning system. And so uh, it is much better to downsample these images to a small resolution. Uh, and actually at the small resolution, they would also retain uh, most of the information. So indeed, it, it is a good strategy to use. Um, and so it provides uh, four different uh, down sampling, downscaling strategies, the first being subsampling or interpolation or max pooling or min, min pooling. So these are four available options for the user uh, to implement, um, to use, to select from. Um, and the way uh, our pipeline works is it's a two-pronged approach. The first step is to generate data and the second approach is to synchronize data. Um, and the first step actually utilizes the SunPy Fido functionality uh, in order to query the SDAC VSO database. It then obtains the metadata from, from the Soho, the Soho products. Um, and then our code uh, basically uh, inputs the user uh, time steps, selecting the proper uh, time stamps from these images, as well as selects, it selects the proper sized images because actually the type of the types of data that are available on the NASA SDAC database are very heterogeneous. There are uh, self-calibration movies, there are different sized images. Um, and so only a subset of that data actually corresponds to the 1K by 1K or even 512 by 512 uh, good quality images that should be used for input to machine learning system. And so with this equipped with this knowledge, um, this pipeline goes in and reduces the data space further um, into um, the, ser the searchable data space, uh, after which uh, images are downloaded and then checked uh, for missing data. And so any uh, missing data uh, images are basically uh, thrown out with a URL pointer to those images kept. And then the indices are dynamically updated in order to continue to fetch uh, the appropriate images with the appropriate, with the user selected time window. After this, uh, the good images are basically compiled into a data cube, which is presented in the form of an HDF5 uh, uh, compressed format, along with the CSV file containing the times for each separate data product. Now this is fed into step two, which is a synchronization step. The user can select either a subset of the products initially chosen or, or the full or all the products. And also this, a subset of the initial uh, date range as well as uh, either the same or a coarser uh, time step. Uh, and so this second step uh, synchronizes the data uh, providing again as an output the HDF5 uh, compressed files together with now a single list of time uh, timestamps because all the all the products are now synchronized to be at the same time the same times and so uh, with this standardized data set which is now um, cleaned and also temporarily synced uh, this can be now entered uh, as inputs into uh, 
uh, a machine learning framework. So as an example uh, of a machine learning framework, uh, we will get into that in just a moment. Uh, but first, as a benchmark for the data generation step, we see that it takes, um, for instance, for this example of having a six hour time step ranging from January 1st, 1996 to May 1st, 2011, uh, we see that it takes a total of 37 hours to process all seven products uh, to a resolution of 128 by 128 pixels. And also the HDF5 uh, cubes are quite, are in megabytes, so, so quite light. And that's very good because all of these, the entire data cubes can be entered into a machine learning system, especially this is very helpful when one wants to uh, enter, let's say several uh, data cubes or even all data cubes from all seven products in parallel. And this can then be fit onto a, onto a GPU, let's say, of, of 10 gigabytes in size. Um, and so let's say as an example of a use case of how our pipeline can be used for, for space weather, uh, we give an example of forecasting BZ, uh, the north-south component of the interplanetary magnetic field at Lagrange point one. And so let's say the user can decide to fit in, to feed in, let's say six of these image products uh, in parallel uh, at, a, at a time window of six hours. And so this goes into a deep CNN network, which is uh, cast as a binary classification problem. Um, and so uh, it classifies whether uh, the predicted uh, BZ value, let's say three to five days ahead of when the images were taken is above or below a certain threshold. In this case, let's say it's negative uh, seven nano Tesla. Um, so, and this, is, this corresponds to a certain percentile of the available uh, labels, so the available ground truth labels, which would be from, in this case, the Omni data set um, uh, with one hour uh, cadence, uh, taking uh, average, average values at every one hour uh, from the Omni data set. And the total data is split into an 80-10-10 split for training, validation, and test sets. And uh, schematically, this is illustrated uh, with this DFCNN. One can have up to uh, seven parallel uh, networks with the additional option of having time series data uh, that would be concatenated in the last step to this uh, fully connected layer. So this fully connected features coming from these data cubes, but then having this optional additional time series data, let's say from uh, 27 days prior to when the images were taken, and then having the ground truth labels, uh, which correspond to the BZ values, which are three to five days ahead of the images, uh, three to five days ahead because uh, this corresponds to the average uh, solar wind speed, uh, sorry, the average propagation of the CMEs, which is around 400 kilometers per second. And so uh, one casts these uh, BZ values in terms of uh, a binary zeros or ones uh, in order to have this binary classification problem. And then as a, a loss function, one has um, the binary cross entropy and then one can compare uh, the predictions of the CNN network, let's say with traditional baselines, such as the Gaussian naive base classifier, uh, where one has chosen, let's say uh, traditional statistics like the minimum, maximum, standard deviation, mean, kurtosis, uh, skewedness of the images, and perhaps even let's say something like the fractal dimension of the images. And so, um, our pipeline, uh, the advantages of using our software pipeline is that it provides a standardized machine learning ready data set uh, that can be used, let's say, for a space weather use case. It provides clean and temporarily synced data, uh, and it's uh, flexible and modular code, which utilizes SunPy FIDO functionality. It facilitates reproducibility and uh, reinforces community standards, and it serves as a potentially valuable resource for the community uh, when it would be found that there's enough information content in the images. And that's, that's a question wor very worthwhile to explore. Uh, and it's definitely uh, can be a very valuable source for the community. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, bye.